All right. So uh, thank you everyone for attending this evening. My name is Curtis Knapp, and I'm the online marketing officer for the UMB Fredericton campus. Um, I want to thank our panel today for attending. We have Katie Beers, um, Joshua Bubar, and a surprise guest. Uh, we have Curtis Layden joining us. Um, and the reason why we have Curtis here is because we've actually got a lot of questions about uh, the anxieties of, of studying in a province that, you know, you don't, it's not your home province. Um, and Curtis is actually from Alberta, so he's going to be able to give you some insight on what it's like to study uh, away from your home province. Um, we actually received uh, quite a few questions, and we'll try to get through them all uh, if we can. So how this will work is I'm going to go through a brief overview of UMB. I'm going to answer some questions that our panel probably isn't really equipped to answer, um, and then we're going to uh, we're going to hand it off to our panel. So let's get started. So, 1785. The University of New Brunswick was founded in 1785. It's actually the oldest English language university in Canada, and it's one of the oldest universities in North America. Uh, and a fun fact, it's actually older than Canada itself. Sorry about that. So over 75, we have over 75 undergraduate and graduate programs here at UMB. Um, and so if you know, if you don't know what you want to do when you get to university, you have lots of options when you get here. If you decide you want to do arts and change your mind later, it's easy to switch from one program to the other. And the other thing I want to talk about is the 24-7 support that we offer here at UMB. I think that's what really sets us apart, is the personalized approach that we take um, when we're taking care of our students. Um, so part of this personalized service includes our, uh, if you're sick, you know, if you need groceries, academic help, career counseling, if you even just need someone to talk to, there's usually someone here on campus that can help you. Uh, and this photo is actually of one of our vice presidents, Tony Secco. Every Tuesday, he's, he sits down with students and for an hour, uh, and talks to them about the university experience. It's called Tuesdays with Tony. Um, in the bonus, uh, he gives out coupons for anyone who just sits down and chats with them. So if you just want a free coffee, by all means, uh, sign up, sit down, and say hi. And there you go. So that's it for my brief overview. Um, now to the questions that I don't think our, our panel is probably really equipped to answer. And the first one is, do you have to take advanced math uh, to, to get into the business program at UMB? Um, so I'll start off by saying this. The admission requirements for our programs vary based on province because the high school curriculum uh, varies by province. So if you're in Nova Scotia, uh, you do need to take an advanced math 12 or an academic math 12 with a minimum grade of 60%. And you also need to take pre-calc math 12 with a minimum grade of 60%. Second question, Casey from New Brunswick asked, what are the differences between UMB SJ and UMB FRED? Um, so some of you may not know this, but the University of, Cam of New Brunswick actually has two campuses. The Fredericton campus was established in 1785, um, and the St. John ca campus was established in 1964. They're actually celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Um, so the Fredericton campus is a larger campus in a smaller city, and the St. John campus is a smaller campus in a larger city. Um, we do offer similar programs, and what we, we recommend to students is if you're considering one or the other, take a campus tour uh, of of each and see what's right for you. In fact, no matter what school you're interested in attending, uh, we always recommend students to go take a campus tour and, and see if, it's, if it feels right for you. 
Um, and the third question, uh, Sarah from Ontario asked, is it difficult to get accepted? Um, and I guess it depends on what you mean by difficult. Uh, if, as long as you meet the requirements for most of our programs, you will get in. Um, so as long as it's not difficult for you to reach those requirements, um, then it shouldn't be too bad. Um, our programs in nursing and engineering are, are, actually are competitive though. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. So that was all of those questions. And now we're going to get on to the questions for our student panel. And let's start um, with Katie. So the first question is pretty simple. What's it like being a student at UMB? Um, being a student at UMB is pretty awesome. Um, there's lots of opportunities here. I find I'm a second year student in the arts program, and I find there's just tons of opportunities for me to take. Um, there's interdisciplinary programs, so I'm doing a double major in sociology and law and society. And law and society is made up of a bunch of different courses from different areas. So there's political science, there's philosophy, there's sociology, there's psychology, and there's just a lot of opportunities there. There's a lot of help on campus. I never find myself uh, feeling lost because there's always somebody to go to, and the whole campus is just really friendly. Every time I walk to class, I find a stranger smiling at me as I'm going to class. So I find it a really great and wonderful experience here. Perfect. Uh, Curtis, do you want to tackle that one? Sure. What about you? Oh, are we doing first questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. What's it like being a student at UMB? Um, I really enjoy it. I, um, like Curtis said, I come from Alberta, and it was really welcoming. And uh, there's a lot of great supports on campus. Whether you're living in residence and you have proctors that are fellow students that are there for support for you or your academic advisors, I found um, those supports at the university really helpful in transitioning me from in moving from Alberta to New Brunswick. Perfect. All right, we're going to go to another question. Uh, Tess from Ontario wanted to know, what about UMB as a university stands out the most to you? So Josh, do you want to take that one? Sure, what about UMB as a university stands out the most to you? The university, one thing I really like and what does stand out I find with UMB is the campus itself. Uh, the campus is really, really beautiful. I've uh, attended a few different conferences and competitions around Canada at multiple universities and still by none, I always find the UMB campus is gorgeous. Uh, maybe UMB as a university or as a university student what really stands out. Uh, a lot of it is the, how you can diversify and you can almost customize in a lot of the different programs. So some programs are more clean cut when you come into the business faculty or kind of like how Katie was saying within our arts faculty. You can really custom tailor it to what you choose and what you want it to be. Perfect. Okay. Melissa from Nova Scotia had a, a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is, do you find there's lots of academic supports? Katie, do you want to tackle that? Sure. Um, there's so much academic support here at UMB. Um, every student in their first year gets an academic advisor who's a prof and helps you out along the way with all of your courses and helps you decide uh, what courses to take and make sure you're on the right path and that you have all the requirements for your program. There's also the Math Health Center, the Writing Health Center. Um, there's the libraries, the librarians are really helpful there. And just um, your student network is really helpful too. You can get a lot of information from your fellow students. Okay. Um, how about Curtis, you answer the next one. Are, are the professors good? That's an excellent question. And I don't think it's a matter of whether they're good or not. I think it's a matter of the style that you enjoy the professor the way the professor teaches, lots of, um, some professors are very lecture based and they like to deliver the information for you and have you read the chapters in a course and others engage you a lot more and um, there's discussion based, discussion based. And so I've had friends that prefer that lecture style. They like to sit in the class, take the information and leave. And I have other friends that like to get a lot more involved. So it really depends on the type of um, teaching style that you enjoy. And it's gonna differ from class to class and professor to professor. Josh, you want to answer that too? Yeah, it's, I really agree with Curtis on it. It's, it's really subjective to what your style teaching likes. I think a big thing, elaborating on that question, is more or less as time goes on and you learn what teaching style works best for you, 
you'll find what professor it is. Or if you really want to uh, measure scale to go across faculties, because it also depends on your faculty, uh, are they qualified? And yes, I would say the UMU professors are definitely qualified. And that more or less is a comparable you can use. But it's still going to be subjective on how you as a student feel you learn best. Sometimes I enjoy a PowerPoint more where the professor just reads through and goes through, and then I can learn more mental time and reading. Other times I know students that really enjoy the lectures, very, very enticing. Every once in a while, sometimes you have a dry professor and you, you think, wow, well, I really have to learn on my own more. And sometimes you have a really, really interesting and really well professor. So it's a little more subjective. Sarah, they qualify, I would say yes. Perfect. That's great. Um, are you enjoying your UMB experience? Curtis, do you want to answer that? Um, that's an easy question. Yeah, I am. I, this is my second year. I came back after the summer, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. It's a great place to study. Katie? Yeah, I'm absolutely enjoying my experience. I'm living in residence on campus for the second year in a row, and I absolutely love it. Um, my program just keeps getting better, and I Love the campus. Perfect. All right. Here's a good one. Last of the question from Melissa from Nova Scotia. What is your favorite and least part about UMB? I'm going to have everyone go through this. So, Josh, you want to start? Sure. My favorite part, I kind of mentioned before with the campus. Uh, I really do like the campus. I do like the people. I mean, I'm, I am from Fredericton, so I still didn't know that fair amount of individuals coming in, but that still being said, the majority of the people I hang out with now, so speaking to anyone who could be listening in this not, that is from Fredericton, the majority of the people that I still tend to see, because you can end up getting so many opportunities to get involved, are still not people from Fredericton. From that, still my favorite, I really, I really do think it's, I really do think it's the campus for sure. The least favorite part about UMB, Meal and all food's not the greatest. <laughs> all right, the food's not the greatest. <laughs> Perfect. Curtis? Um, I think it's two sides, of, or two sides of the same coin for me. Um, like Josh said, it's definitely the campus that's my favorite part. Um, it's on a hill, and so it's just a beautiful sight overlooking Fredericton. And I think my least favorite part is probably that walk up the hill in the winter. Yeah. So uh, it's a beautiful place to study, but uh, Definitely when it's snowing, it's a little more challenging, but it's a catch-22. It's a catch-22. It really is. Yeah. It's definitely a good workout. Uh, all right, Kate, what do you think? Um, my favorite part would probably be the, all the opportunities that I get in my program. Like, before coming here, I just thought I wanted to do sociology, and then I learned about the interdisciplinary program called Law and Society, and I find that it's a really good program for me and what I want to do. And there's a lot of like paths to take through that. And my least favorite part about UMB would probably be a combination of uh, Josh and Curtis would be the food at Meal Hall and, and the walk up the hill. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, we actually got a lot of questions about um, how do you deal with that transition from high school to university. Um, uh, Emily from Nova Scotia and Reese from PEI both asked basically the same question. Um, how is the transition from high school to university and how did you cope with that transition? Um, Josh, do you want to start? Yeah, that's a, actually a really, really good question. Uh, I would say for me, speaking from a Fredericton student standpoint, um, I didn't find it was as much a transition, maybe, as Katie or Curtis might have thought, because I'm from the province, I'm from the city. But still, it is significantly different because, yes, you're familiar with the city, but you're still not familiar with all the aspects of the university. And coming from high school, where you're in so much more of a structured environment and everyone has to do the very similar tasks and perform in similar standards, it's not the same when you come to university. So now it's much, much more independent. I really thought the transition myself was good because it gives you the ability now to really, you know, take grasp of what you want to do. And so, if you want to strive to go further, you can. It's not held back to a specific benchmark and bar that's set. How did I end up coping with that? Because there still is it's an enormous amount of people 
compared to high school, even coming from a high school that had 2,000 people, going to campus with significantly more people. Uh, still coping with that. The UMB does a great job at having a nice small class sizes. And from the small class sizes, you still actually get to see your professors, and you're not a, not a digit, so to speak. Kurt? Um, transition? High school to university. I think for me it was pretty easy. I did travel across the country, but I took a gap year in between, so I had some time to adjust out of high school and then back into university. Um, I had something I was going to say, and I forgot. Sorry. It was, I think, I'm going to tell like a broken record tonight, but I think it's the supports on campus. It's, um, it, some people, it's a real, real natural transition, and others struggle with it. And so to understand that there's academic advisors that you can talk to about your course load with, or there are your proctors in with residents that you can talk to and your friends. Use those supports because they're going to make the transition so much easier for you. And um, trust yourself. If you're finding you're struggling with it, you can reach out and find those supports. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's really on an individual basis. Okay. Um, hmm. The tr transition for me was. Um, Pretty easy. I think I was just really ready to come to university as a high school student, and uh, I found like the course load was a little bit different. I found especially that uh, in university there wasn't those everyday assignments that you had to do for class. It was more of the like there was a big chunk essay at one point, or there was three essays for the term, and then those required more time, and you would work on them gradually. But I think that the real transition for me was just kind of figuring out how to study and how to work differently in the university environment and stuff like that. But I found that there was also a lot of support for me to get involved and figure out my own way of working at university. Perfect. That actually kind of gives me a good segue. Um, I had two questions, one from Sarah from Ontario and Andrea from Ontario. Uh, one person asked, how heavy is the coursework in university compared to high school, and the other asked, how did the class, class sizes and content pace compare to that of high school? And I think that mention of pace is actually something that maybe high school students don't realize is that um, you know the content, it, it might not be more difficult, but it's going to come at you at a little bit faster pace. Um, do any of you want to? Yeah, yeah I, I, would, I would agree. It definitely, and it depends on how you want to tailor your program and what you're doing yourself. It does come at you at a faster pace, especially at the start, you will notice that. Uh, but what you soon learn is you'll learn you have to be able to order your time and to manage your time. You're also going to see now that, yeah, your content comes at you faster, but your study time, so to speak, isn't just, isn't just dictated by the amount of time you're going to spend in school during that day in your class, like when you've been in high school, or the RNs you go on. And instead, now, it's if you want to do your work, Later after dinner, and you want to come back to school, you can and you will. But it definitely it does come at you faster at first. But the resources are there to assist you on adjusting. And I find as time starts to go on, you definitely adjust well. And, and then it just seems like it's a much better system in, in helping you learn and you'll actually draw more than sometimes the high school can be mundane. Curtis, do you want to? Sure. Um, I think there definitely is a heavier course load in my program specifically, Renaissance College. It is it's condensed degree, so I have heavier course load than a lot of the other faculties. But even then, students are able to, um, like Josh said earlier, really tailor their learning and the students find that they can't cope with the number of courses they have. They can talk to their academic advisor about dropping one or two. And at the same time, you're able to take courses that you're probably going to enjoy or um, end up in a faculty that you're really interested in. I think that helps with the course load in that you're now studying subjects that you want to study, and it's not so much just being given a broad range of everything like in high school. And I will say, um, just on the back and frame, uh, just like uh, on the transitioning piece, I think one thing you can keep in mind is that our office, the Student Improvement Office, we do uh, we host transition events every winter. Um, and it's for U UMB students, newly admitted UMB students, people considering UMB. And even if you know you decide maybe UMB isn't for me, still come out to these events because it gives you a lot of good general information about how to succeed at university. Uh, we talk a lot about time management, um, a lot about taking advantage of student services because you do pay for them. Um, so yeah, just a lot of those tips. Um, also, in our office, we have a person 
called a transition facilitator. So if you do decide to come to UMB, um, that person will be here. If you have a question about, I don't know where to go, I don't know who to talk to about this, you can reach out to him. His name, his name is Dave Andrews. You can reach out to Dave and he will meet with you and figure out what you need to do. So those support services are available to you. All right, um, gonna move on. I like this one. Jacqueline from Nova Scotia asked, did either of you have a part-time job while attending school? And if so, was it difficult to balance everything? Uh, Katie, let me start. Uh, yeah, I actually have a part-time job right now. I didn't in my first year just because I really wanted to get a feel for my program and how much time it was going to take and what kind of course load it was. But now I'm working on campus. I do a work-study program, which is just 10 hours a week. And my boss is really flexible because she knows that I'm a university student and it's on campus and she knows what courses I take and stuff like that. So she's really flexible with the hours. And I find it's actually really good for me because it helps me manage my time better. I know that I have to get my assignment done now because I work tomorrow and I need to hand it in tomorrow. So I have to get it done a couple days in advance. So I find it's really helpful for me and I find it's a little bit of extra money and I don't find it too difficult to manage. Yeah, and for, for those who may not know what a work study program is, um, you apply uh, for a job on campus, basically, um, um, and it you know it's obviously it's, it's a paid work, and it usually applies to to your degree as well. So, Curtis, do you want to? I don't have anything to say in that respect because I don't personally have a part time job. Yeah, I know friends that effectively balance both. Okay, perfect. Uh, I've actually worked since I started at my first year at UMB. I have always had a part time job. I still have a part time job. Um, most of the time, actually, according to Jack Lassen's question, uh, I've actually had two part-time jobs at all given times, including now. Usually it's required about an additional 25 to 35 hours of work a week. So how has that worked and has that, has that balanced? You, have, you learn time management very quickly. Um, it's, it's, it's different. Uh, if you have something more like Katie, where you have a work study where you have like a 10 to 15 hours a week, it's it's much nicer. I have did that on one of the years. I still had two jobs, but it's been all less work. Uh, from it, it's doable. It is. Uh, would I necessarily recommend working as much? Probably not. But working at the same time, it definitely builds really good time management skills. And you're just able to find, okay, maybe this semester I feel I might have to work more. So I have to work more um, outside of school then I'm going to have to work, I'm going to have to maybe try, like, not take as many courses and because you can custom tailor your program, you can most definitely do that and from the degree of uh, workload or difficulty that course may have a very heavy course and you'll subside and take that course down and take it later. But it is very doable. Perfect. Um, Mackenzie from New Brunswick asks, how could one make the best of their upcoming years at UMB? So how can you make the best out of your university experience, I guess. Uh, Katie, where you go? Uh, I find living in residence is the best way to kind of take advantage of your opportunities, especially if you're kind of like an introverted person and you don't really, you aren't too comfortable with getting to know people. But um, I've lived in residence for, this is my second year, and there's just a lot of opportunities with intramurals. There's a ton of different intramural sports you can play or just go watch the games. Your house will compete against a different house and it's really fun to watch. Um, there's a bunch of different activities that happen within residence, but there's also the student union on campus that puts on a lot of activities every week. And just taking advantage of those and taking advantage of the services on campus. So your academic support and your the gym pass that you'll get and all of that stuff it's a really good way to take advantage of the things that you're paying for and the great opportunities that are out there and you get to meet a lot of new people. All right, Curtis? Um, I think balance is what I'm going to say. Balance between your academics and your social time because some people spend too much time on one or the other and it ends up hurting them. So if you spend too much time partying, you're going to hurt your academics. But if you spend too much time in school, you're not going to enjoy yourself and you're, um, that's not going to be a good thing either. And on the social side, there, like Katie said, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved if you're in residence or with the student union. 
And UNB has dozens of different clubs on campus that cater to almost any interest. So take the opportunity to get involved in those. And if you find that there isn't something on campus for you, it's really easy to start your own organization and get some friends together and find something that you're interested in and do that at UNB. Definitely. And those are, those are both two. I'm just going to elaborate on to both of them and to say, and I know it's, you definitely have heard this before, I know I was heard in high school was to get involved and stuff. There's so many opportunities that a lot of the times people don't even realize that you have on campus. And so many, like, as Curtis says, he talks about clubs. There's actually over over 140 different ratified clubs that can apply. And these these clubs are funded. They they get funding from the UNB Student Union, which hosts all of these different events that you can go to. So either get involved in one of these clubs uh, if you like. And when I say there's a lot, there's anything from your ski club to your wall climbing club to your dating club to your chess club, anything you can think of. So you can join into one of those, or you get involved in UNB Student Union. They put on various concerts and events. They provide services for people. Then even on top of that, they have orientation. Orientation is a huge part of UMB. It's another thing you'll be able to see online in the UMB Student Union or through UMB. And it, just getting involved in general, there's so many perks you can do. But at the same time, I completely agree with Curtis. You need to be able to balance that with your school and your life. And it's, it's very doable and it's very attainable and just drives more back to say time management learning as quickly, but I would definitely say in short, just just to get involved and just open up to take a look. You you don't have this social hierarchy at UNB when it comes to now. You have all of these different opportunities and services you can do easily. One really cool thing is if there isn't a club or a society that really appeals to you, you can actually create your own. Um, one student I remember was two or three years ago. He came here. He loved lacrosse, but there wasn't a lacrosse team or a group that played it, so he actually just created it himself. So that's always an option for you too. Um, ooh, here's a good one. Max from New Brunswick asks, "What other schools were you interested in?" Um, Josh, we'll start with you. Myself. All right. So as you mentioned, I'm the business faculty. Uh, other schools, I very very heavily looked at uh, Queens Commerce in Ontario. Uh, as well as Western University of Western Ontario, and we've been at their Ivy program, uh, and I looked a little bit at Dalhousie. I uh, myself personally at the time wasn't looking at going to the school in New Brunswick. I was actually going to look at going to one outside of Atlanta, Canada. Um, but those would be the main ones that I'd say I uh, looked at. Um, I'm not sure, Max, if you're looking for, I guess, why we chose UMB or the other schools we looked at. Uh, there was just a lot of factors with, I felt that staying in New Brunswick or staying in Fergus at the time could help me to capitalize on future uh, future issues, future things I wanted to do. So I could stay, I lived at home for a little bit to save money, and I worked during the time. I felt I could do that better in Fergus uh, than doing that at UMB. But mostly I would say Queen's Commerce and uh, University of Western Ontario were the most heavily ones I looked at. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, I think he's kind of, he's probably wondering what other schools are you interested in and, you know, and why you chose UB, so thank you. Uh, Curtis? Um, well, being from Alberta, my two top choices were University of Alberta and University of Calgary because I was right in between both of them in the province. But ultimately, I'm going to tell this again, um, the faculty. Being able to take a leadership degree at UNB and do business with it as well really appealed to me and that's why I decided to come up here and why I decided to move. So. I was looking at home-based schools, but ultimately UNB appealed to me more. Great, Katie. Um, I looked at going to St. Thomas, um, St. Effects, and Mount A. And originally UNB wasn't actually one of my choices, but I came here with a friend and took a tour. And after sitting down with a recruitment agent and just kind of talking about the program more, I decided that UNB was my top pick because. It was one of the schools that really just focused on the program for me and then also gave me a lot of opportunities to get involved and do other things. And the arts program here has a lot of um, things that focus on doing law, which is something I'm interested in going into after my undergrad. So it was really just the best option for me program-wise, and I also just was really attracted to the campus. All right. Sarah from Nova Scotia wants to know, was the university experience itself worth the money? 
really interesting question. Curtis, why don't you start? Sure. Absolutely. I, um, university experience is a broad term, but I think both um, social-wise and academic-wise, yeah. um, I've enjoyed both, both yeah. experiences. My first year I was in residence and I got to meet a lot of new people and try a lot of different things on campus. And um, I don't know where else to go with it other than it's absolutely worth it. Yeah, I think that's one people or one thing people don't think about is that it's not just about the academic experience, it's about the social experience. And I think that's what Sarah's trying to get at here. Uh, Katie, on it. Yeah, um, I definitely think it was worth it. I actually looked at doing um, a degree at NBCC too. So, and I was just kind of weighing my options there and what would be the difference of getting a college degree and a university degree. And I really just ultimately it was the experience that made me see that all of that money was definitely worth it and living in residence and meeting all of those people and then like getting a program that's fit customly for you and not a program that's written down on a sheet of paper and given to you. Perfect. Josh? Yeah, and just to add to that even, just from looking at the question, uh, not even relating itself to just UMB itself, but relating instead to like a university experience versus not attaining that or attaining that at college. I'm just looking at it in general, I would say most definitely. Uh, and not even purely just based on academics, just like life skills, and like the fact that you're, you're going to build a work ethic, to me it was a huge thing because when you're in high school or in the like, public education system, you it has to accommodate for all different levels and like different levels of learning. Whereas when you come to university, yes, it still is accommodates, but when you're in your program, you still do have a benchmark that you do need to meet up to. So I really think not just not just in general how your academic is, but with life skills and life lessons, and just as a person, it definitely is worth the money. Okay. Um, another fun question, Kayla from uh, the United States wants to know, how is the food? Uh, Curtis, start us off. Yeah. Um, well, I guess, how is the food? It has its good days and its bad days, um, but the, your meals change, change frequently, and so that's nice. I lived in, like I said, I lived in residence my uh, first year, and now I'm living on my own. And it's really nice being a first year student, having that stability and that you know you can just go get a meal whenever you want and you don't have to worry about cooking for yourself or buying groceries or anything like that. And the nice thing about Sodexo on campus is that they're really flexible with um, meal options and they're really great at taking students feedback and advice to change up what they're doing. And we do have gluten free options, uh, vegan options as well. So, uh, Kate? Yeah, I've lived in residence for my for two years now, and um, the food, like Curtis says, has its good days and its bad days, but you can almost always find something to eat at Meal Hall, or even on campus, we've got Quiznos, we've got Tim Hortons, and then there's the grill at the sub, and there's a convenience store where you can go get some stuff, and I just find that it's really convenient to always have that, like the reliability that you can always just go pick something up to eat, and there's always something there to eat. And also just having a few groceries in your room is also pretty handy. All right. So yeah, adding to that, I'm not gonna promote, I'm not gonna lie to say that I think Meal Hall is really good, but they have added a couple of things where one of the projects they have now is called My Kitchen. So you can actually go in to make your own food. So you can make just unreal smoothies if you want. Uh, people are in there all the time making omelets. Yes, they do still have food made for you as well, but if you choose, you won't eat. Like some people just like to cook. I enjoy cooking. So you can go in and you can cook on your own. Uh, or even from that, the other places on campus, like if you go into the cellar, besides they have great beer, they have really, really good food in there and it's cheap because in the sense it's for the students and tax free. So they have great options there. John the stir fry guy, we call him. He's he's up and he makes stir fries and stuff and they're absolutely phenomenal and they're also quite cheap. So there's still a lot of other eateries, there's a lot of other places on campus where you can still go and get food besides just meal hall. But that's why I think these these two put it best. All right. Thank you, Josh. And we are going to switch gears a little bit. Um, I have two questions about business for Josh. So Corinne from Nova Scotia 
she wanted to know what's the course load like for business students and what are some good electives to choose? Uh, the course load, actually both of these questions are late still. What electives you want to choose is a lot based on what you personally think. Uh, there's a lot of electives that you might feel relate and you might feel don't relate, but it's all in choices. I did some language electives uh, just because I wanted to learn more within the language, within multiple languages. You could do various, various amounts. Anything from what you find you're interested in, you can go more, more difficult or course heavy, you can go to what you think is fun. It's all on what perspective you like. The course load itself, again, is very variable. So when you go into business, you may start out general. Uh, but then when you come to near the end of your second year, your third year, you're going to choose what you feel your major or minors or double majors are going to be. That's really going to dictate what your course load is in. Um, my specialty is finance and accounting, and they're both tend to be a heavier workload, uh, but it's still on what, you know, do you like numbers? Do, uh, do you like qualitative? Do you like quantitative questions? Uh, then you can do human resources, or you can do marketing, or you can do entrepreneurship or international business. It really depends on what you're going to choose for your for your majors and your minors is going to determine what your course load is going to be like. Perfect. Um, next question: What academics do I need to get into business? Savannah from PEI. So Curtis kind of talked about this a little bit before. So, um, if you're mentioning academics was specifically on courses in high school, um, he did mention the math. Uh, the math is important. That being said, there is, I know when I was in high school, they offered a lot of higher end calculus courses. Do I recommend them if you wanted to take finance or you wanted to do um, even maybe applicable in some of the accounting? Yes, I would say you can take it, but you don't have to. Uh, for a lot of the business, you just need the basic math requirements that you mentioned prior, like your advanced math with an introduction to calculus. Then when you actually come in, you're going to continue to elaborate on that. And I will say most definitely, those courses did help me when I got to university. Um, other than that, knowing math is good. Um, if you have the chance, similar to how Curtis is talking for his program, if you have the chance to take some leadership courses, I would highly recommend those. I thought I took a couple in high school and I thought they really helped when I got in because they especially assist you on public speaking. Um, and that helps you with a vast amount of courses when you have to do presentations. But overall, I think I think Curtis covered a bit of, I, of what I would say on the math. Um, other than that, specifically on courses, uh, a lot of it would just be related to you and the admissions, as mentioned. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Really good advice. Um, we're going to switch to uh, Curtis now. These are just general questions about Living away from home, I, I noticed we had uh, someone actually asked during the session the same sort of question, so I want to talk about that now. Um, so Curtis, Dalton from Ontario wants to know, what should I know as an out-of-province out of student about applications and the university in general? Um, that's a really good question, and just right off the bat, what I'm going to say is, what I'm going to tell you is not a prescription or how you know, everyone that's at the province does things. This is how I went about it. This was my experience. Um, a few things that I would say with respect to that is apply sooner rather than later. I was, um, I came and checked out the University of New Brunswick and I didn't apply for four months and I was really scared I wasn't going to get in. So if you have that ability, uh, definitely you can apply online and uh, it's a lot more secure that way. You know what you're going to do. Um, with that being said, maybe try and establish contact with someone at the university as well that you can have a rapport with as you go through the application process. I met the academic advisor for my faculty and I was able to communicate with her about the application process and that was really helpful. Also, um, being a student at UMB, keeping, a flight on, uh, keeping an eye on flights and exam period is really important because I fly to and from home at Christmas time and for the summer, so just being aware of when your exams are scheduled and all of that, that's, that's, that's anecdotal, but it's really helpful to know. And the two other things I would say are make sure you keep in touch with people back from home. They're going to be a great support system for you. Um, I Skype with my family once a week and I keep in touch with friends. And uh, get involved. UNB, like we said earlier, has, what was it, 140 different clubs that you can join, the student union. Residence is also a great place. So I'd say take advantage of that and uh, get involved. 
All right. Colin from Ontario asked, is it hard living away from, from home? That's another great question. In my experience, uh, yeah, it was at the beginning because I moved, again, halfway across the country to come to school and I didn't know, I knew a couple people because they were in the same program, but uh, I, I really didn't know anyone coming, coming to UNB and it took me some time to get adjusted. It was probably the better half of September. But once I did, I got so caught up in my day-to-day -day activities in school, in um, hanging out with the new friends that I had made and all of that, you start to forget about home and you start to just become enveloped in what's going on at the university and all of the different things that you can participate in. So what I would say to that is, if you're really not sure if you're about moving away or it's your first time being away from home, residence is gonna be a fantastic support for you. I'm glad I did it both semesters because it gave me a great foundation at UMB to make some friends, get to know people. And then second year, I decided, you know what? I've got a good friend base. I'm gonna move in with a couple of them. And um, starting there is a, is a great thing we can do. Okay. Um, now, Curtis is actually um, a part of the Renaissance College uh, program here at UMB. Um, and they actually do two types of internships. It's, kind of, it's a very unique program. I won't go into it because this isn't really what this webinar is about. But uh, anyway, Julia from Ontario wanted to know what types of internships does the Renaissance program offer? So Curtis, maybe you could just talk a little bit about, I know you've done your Canadian internship already. There's also an international internship. These are both required parts of your, of your program. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about that. For sure, yeah, so we're required to do two internships. One is a Canadian one. Um, you also have options to go to the United States because the idea is that you find a work placement and you take what you learned in your first year of university and you apply it um, in, a, in a workplace setting. You go into the real world and you work for the summer and apply a lot of the leadership studies that you took in your first year. And then in the second year, after you, you have another year of the program under your belt, you go into an international internship. And these placements are established in um, India, Bhutan, Belize, Vietnam. And that gives you the opportunity to go and have a cultural experience. It's not so much um, volunteering or an aid-based project as much as it is taking the leadership skills that you've learned and you go into another country and you experience how they do things. And it's very involved. There's an organization on the ground that you work with. and those are two core components of the degree um, as it is condensed and you do those in your summers. Okay, thank you, Curtis. All right, um, now we have some questions about the arts program and we're gonna to turn to Katie for those. Um, Nick List from New Brunswick asked, what's the university like? What's the university like? I think we've already kind of answered that one so maybe we'll just go to the second part of this question. Would it be helpful for someone to go into criminology? So would it be helpful to go into criminology at university? Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm doing the Law and Society program. And after my undergrad, I'm thinking about either doing a law degree or a social work degree. So um, I can talk a little bit about that. Criminology, we don't offer an exact um, department of criminology here at UOB, but we, the sociology department offers a few courses in it. There's a psychology of crime courses. And there's just a, a couple different courses on crime here that would be very helpful for somebody who's looking into going into criminology. And as a person who's kind of looking into that path, the Law and Society program at UNB is really helpful for that because you kind of get an experience of all of the different types of law and how it really fits in into a bunch of different places. So I would say yes, it's really helpful. Okay. Um, and the next one. Can you talk maybe a little bit what, what you're studying in arts? Sure. Um, so I'm doing a double major or a joint honors in sociology and law and society. Um, so sociology, I'm taking a deviance course. I'm take, I've taken the intro course. I've taken a social problems course and a, a couple of different courses like that. So sociology is all about why people do what they do because of society. Um, and I find that very interesting. I've also taken some philosophy courses, a really cool first year course is the ethics of life and death, which I found really interesting. Um, I've taken first year psych and the Law and Society program, I've taken a couple different courses through that. And so just there's a bunch of different pathways through arts. I find um, I, arts has a diversity requirement, which says that you have to take 
Um, three out of four, um, either humanities, social sciences, languages, or a science. So in my first year, I took a French course, and just having to actually diversify in your degree is awesome because you really get to explore new things. Okay, and this one isn't about arts, but it is about residence, so I guess I'll get Katie and Curtis to, to talk about this. Um, Andrea from Ontario, Samal from Newfoundland and Labrador, and Melissa from Nova Scotia all ask the same question. What is residence like? Um, I, residence is really great. I really loved it my first year. Um, I got a roommate who I had never met before. She was from Woodstock in Brunswick and I was from Moncton, so we were kind of on the opposite ends of the province and we talked over Facebook and now we're really good friends and um, we created a really awesome relationship there. Um, you meet friends who kind of become your family base because you live with these people and they're the people you see every day and they just kind of know a lot about you because you live with them. And um, at the beginning of the year, you're kind of worried about like not leaving your room in your pajamas and not like putting on a face every day. And then as the year goes on, you just really stop caring because all of these people are just your family. And I really love that part about residents and getting to go watch the hockey games with them and soccer games and all that was really fun too because you just kind of create that family network and it's like having a, a family away from home. So I really love residents. Cool. Curtis? Um, yeah, I think what Katie said is great. What I would say to Res Life is there are several different options for in residences that you you can choose. So there are larger residences that give you, if you want a larger social network and you want to meet a lot of new people, one of those large residences is going to be great for you. But if you want something more intermediate, there's that as well. And I know people that have lived in, um, I live in one of the larger residences and definitely there's a lot of different people there. And there's one really small residence that's actually off campus that UMB has and you get to cook for yourself and it's only 30 students. So depending on the size of residence you're interested in, you can really cater your experience. If you want that really um, close, small residence or you want a larger residence with a more diverse social experience, you can pick that. All right. Um, so we also have some questions that were just asked during the session here. That, that pretty much covers all the questions that we had beforehand. Um, so let's answer a couple of these. This is a pretty easy one, but it's, you know, it's probably one that we don't really think about, but how long are the classes in university compared to high school? Um, Josh, we haven't heard from you. How long? I depends, I guess, what kind of class you're taking. So typically, in a normal lecture, you're going to have three hours of lecture time per week whether that's divided up into 50 minute slots or two one hour and a half slots or one three hour slot is depending on what the course is offered. Uh, a lot of the courses tend to be in business, so to speak. After first year, uh, you don't have any lectures on Fridays, which is awesome, but you will have all an hour and a half lectures. Um, in a lot of other faculties, you'll have three lectures a week and each of them are going to be 15 minutes. Um, some classes I've got in my evening classes, they're only one night a week, so that's great. And they could go from uh, 4 to 7, or they're going to go, I uh, think the one I have now is from 7 to 10, which seems like that you only have to have it once a week. And it's not that bad. They give you a break halfway in between. Uh, you know, you go grab a coffee, come back, and it's kind of, you just settle in in a sense. but. Overall, it just depends on which classes you're taking and what faculty you can be in, but it's going to be most likely one of those three measurements. Cool. Um, okay. Talk about that. This is actually interesting because we were talking about this before we went live. Does economics fall under business or is it in a different faculty? We were literally having this discussion <laughs> like before that we started. And actually, uh, I'll chime in on that one and then Katie. It's technically it's not under the business faculty. Uh, it's under it's under arts actually everywhere, but 
you end up getting still lots of professors that are actually business professors teaching in the economics faculty. Um, so, so one of my majors is economics, but it's actually out of the arts faculty, and I am a business student. And you can you can very very easily do that. It's not difficult to do at all. Uh, a lot of students do it, but in another sense, you can also do what we call congruent degrees or congruent uh, honors or majors where you have a specific program you enter into where it's finance and economics combined, but yet what you're taking is actually under the business faculty. So summing, summing that up in short, it's out of the arts faculty. It's out of the arts faculty. That's the, we don't need to, it, it's out of the arts faculty. But yeah, no, that's a good explanation. Um, a lot of people ask that. That's not the first time I've heard that. Yeah. Katie, do you have anything to add to? No. No, it's out of the arts faculty. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, um, you know, it's it's really a study of human psychology and, you know, why people, I, I'm speaking out of term, I guess just, it's about buying things, supply and demand, and there is an element of human psychology to it. So I, I guess that's where you can see the tie into arts. Um, but yeah, it's at pretty much every university. It's, uh, it's within the arts faculty. And what's great with UMB is that, um, you know, we have so many different programs and different faculties that stuff like that can happen, right? Like Josh can take courses from the arts faculty and it's, it's very easy to do. So that's one of the strengths of going to a place, whether it's UMB or somewhere else, um, is, is that they have those different faculties where you can just kind of pick and choose courses for, from each. Okay. Um, this is a really good question. We haven't really talked a lot about, we haven't talked at all about Fredericton. And uh, Kayla Cormier asks, is there a lot to do in the city? Um, sorry, I just, Curtis, go first. Okay, um, I would say it depends on what end of the week or what day of the week it is. On Saturdays, I think the most infamous thing is uh, the local market and students go there to get groceries and just, um, they're, I don't even know how to explain it. There's food, drink, um, so many things you can do there. And so that's an opportunity. Um, there's a pretty vibrant downtown scene. Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival is in September. So students can go out and listen to buskers, play on the streets, or go to different concerts um, there as well. Um, the mall's a bit of a trek, but you can take a cab or a bus there and um, get anything you might need to do there. Uh, Josh. Yeah, uh, so I'm still from Ferguson. So if you're kind of wondering, in essence, if you're asking that, what is there to do? Well, first you start saying like how the city is. The city's not a really big city. Uh, it's only I think 70 around 75, 8,000 people. Uh, but overall, it's small, compacted, but it's nice. It's cozy. Yes, there's definitely a, a vibrant downtown. Harvest Jazz is awesome. There's like there's some really awesome pubs. Uh, we have some other. Great, I guess you can still, we call them pubs or bars, but there's still nice clubs. It's, it, it's a lot depending on what you want to do for a nightlife sake. It's still good. There's a great student atmosphere, especially during the school year. So a lot of things that oriented on what you want to do are going to be based around students because you have this influx of 10,000 people that just kind of shows up in September. Um, but uh, overall, like, what is there to do? Lots of stuff on campus. Uh, and then you still have all of your ordinary stuff you want to do exterior from campus, Saturday downtown. The market is a great example. It's a lot of fun. We actually have a Putin Festival in, I think, two weeks, oh, too, yeah. which is pretty cool. I just bought my ticket today. Um, Katie? Uh, yeah, I think one of my favorite parts about Fredericton is really that it's kind of known as a university town. Um, it's got St. Thomas, Frederick, uh, UMB. The Arts College, MUCC. There's just so there's just a really large student base there. So I think like really going downtown, and even if you're just walking around on a Saturday afternoon, it's really just beautiful. We have a really nice downtown. And I think my other favorite part about Fredericton is just that it's a really compact city, and nothing's really that far away, and you can walk pretty much anywhere. Okay. Um. Just going through the questions here. We are running out of time. This is a good one. Is there anything in on the environment for clubs? It's, oh, I'm putting you guys on the spot. You can take that one. 
Oh, okay. Because cool. I'm, I'm on student union, and we just ratified a club called Green UNB. So if that's if that's what you're asking. Yeah, there we just launched a club. Um, where there's a group of students that went through that process of they said we want to start an environment club, and they did that, and now they can apply for funding and put on different projects. And I think they're going to partner with UNB's thousand thousand. No, I think it's million acts of green, and they're going to start championing environmental initiatives at UNB. I can also touch on yeah. that. Um, if you're looking for something like more outdoorsy and just kind of getting outside, there's um, the River Chin Rovers, which is a scout um, club on campus that does a lot of outdoor camping and overnight stuff. So if you're looking for something more like that, there's also that aspect. Okay. Okay, one last question. Um, Oh, let's see here. This is pretty easy, I guess. But how cold does the winter get here on campus? Um, cold. <laughs> it's really cold. Cold. I will not lie about that. It is not warm. But what a lot of students don't tend to see because they're not in the year. Actually, it's really hot in the summer too. So. It's odd when it's 42 degrees Celsius in the summer, but then it's minus 40 in the winter. It That's is, getting really cold, but that does happen. It was minus 40 like maybe once in the last three years, <laughs> and we remembered it for it. <laughs> <laughs> and how it's just burned in your brains. Do um, you guys want to chime in? or? Yeah, I, I would say like anywhere from like minus 25 to minus. 35 probably. But everything tends to be fairly close, so at least at least you as long as you can make it from your residence or from your house, then you make it into the student union building or everything's close. So you just hold your breath, run, you make it to the next building. <laughs> everything's everything's close by. So my favorite part about walking across campus is definitely just like walking through buildings so that you get that like right. 30 seconds of warm and then you yeah. can go back in. But that's it. That question was asked from someone that's, I guess, not from Atlantic Canada. That's just still Atlantic Canada in general. It's, it gets fairly cold in the winter. You get a decent snowfall, which is exactly where the ski lift goes by. And then in the summer, it gets spiked hot. Very true. And uh, what you probably don't realize, too, is that the campus is fairly big, depending on where you're coming from. But um, if you're part of arts, you do tend to, your classes are kind of in the same kind of cluster of buildings, same with business, um, engineering as well. So, something to keep in mind. Um, so, we are actually running up at the end of our time here. Um, I wanted to thank all of you for, for coming and, and asking questions. We did not get to all of them. I'm not surprised with that. Um, we're going to personally get back to each of you um, and answer those for sure. Um, so, if uh, you can also like us on Facebook if you want to know about some future chats that we're doing. Um, I'll show you the page here. So you can like us on Facebook. Um, we do a lot of different prize giveaways. Uh, we talk about our live chats that we're doing. Um, you know, different recruitment events throughout the year. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter. Um, our handle is at discoverumbf. Uh, we just shared a picture of a very cute baby owl that we found today on campus. So if you like baby owls, you need to check out our Twitter page. Um, and our Facebook page is UMB Fredericton Future Students if you want to check that out. Um, also, Curtis, saying similar. If you, For those who ask a lot of the clubs and societies, uh, if you follow through or check out UMB Student Union's uh, web page, or you follow them on Facebook and watch them on Twitter, see a lot of events unfold that they do. Uh, but more importantly, as you're asking to clubs and societies, you can check out all of them online if you're curious what ones are available, and there's a ton of them. As Curtis had mentioned, you can always make your own too through Student Union if you're looking to have a, if, if there's one that doesn't end. So if your thing is, um, horseback riding, which there might even be a club already. <laughs> There's a lot. If, if, you know, if your thing is playing the xylophone, and you'd like to make a xylophone club, which if there could be one, but if there's not, you're able to do it. But you can check out all of those online, or you can, and you can follow UB Student on Facebook to check them out to see more about what they're what they're doing and offering for those who ask for clubs and designs. Definitely. Um, 
some really interesting clubs that we've had. One club was called the Mugglers, and it was just for people who liked drinking liquids out of mugs, and they got together. That was actually a group. We're not kidding. <laughs> um, another one was a sweater sweater vest group, so people who just enjoyed wearing sweater vests. Um, that was also a group, an official UMB group, student group. So. Um, you can make your own or you can join them, it, it doesn't matter. So yes, good point, Josh. So um, I just want to thank our, our student panel for, for giving their time tonight. I really appreciate that. Um, and I also really appreciate everyone here who's attended um, and, and asked those questions. And like I said, we'll get back to, to each of you if we haven't actually answered it yet. So thank you so much. Um, and from you and me, Fredericton, I say good night. Thanks. See you guys.